guys welcome back to my channel in today's video we're going to be talking all about newborn sleep and a little bit about newborn routine baby routine baby sleep things like that this video has been very requested for a while and I've talked about doing it back and forth for the past few months and here I am actually doing it I put this video off because this is like the ideal video that puts a target on you for mom shamers because not everyone's going to agree with your decision to do like a routine or sleep training or whatever method you choose there's always going to be someone who doesn't agree with it and they will come for you so here's my target i know it's going to happen so that's kind of why i put it off for so long but it just keeps being requested so here I am. Um, nervous, but here I am. So if you're new to my channel, I do have twins. They are now eight months old. I have a boy and a girl. They could not be more opposite babies. It's crazy. It's like having babies from two different families. Um, it's just, they're so different, which is just crazy. Even though, I mean, twins are so individuals. A lot of times you just feel like their personalities might be similar, but they are definitely opposite babies. However, when it comes to their routines and their sleep, they have been almost identical with those things since being born. And I think a lot of that is because I've always kind of stressed a routine. Within reason, there's always going to be some variances, but I've always been on this different routine or same routine and trying to push kind of the same things, if that makes sense, but I'm not like neurotic about it. There's definitely times, different days where their naps are longer or shorter or start different or whatever. I'm not so strict about it that I get crazy about like, it's 3.01, it's 3.01, they have to go to sleep now. But I do the same kind of flowing routine where it's pretty much the same. Hopefully that makes sense because I don't think that's going to make sense to anyone. But <laughs> we're going to go ahead and get into this video. Um, if you're new here, I'd love to have you subscribe. Like I said, I'm a mom. I have four kids total. My husband is going to be absent for the next year of our life, kind of on deployment. So I'm going to be solo mom in it here, trying to hold the fort down and going to nursing school and doing all the things. So I'd love to have you on this crazy journey of mine. So hit the subscribe button below and just keep watching. Okay. I'm already out of breath, but let's just give me a minute to breathe. <laughs> um, but okay. So starting from day one, okay. We had one baby in the NICU, one at home. So we knew the NICU schedule. When your child's in the NICU, you know what times they're doing everything. They have a, like our schedule here at our NICU was feeding 2, 5, 8, 11. That was their feeding times, obviously AM and PM. They're not getting fed just four times. So whenever we brought our daughter home, we had her on that same schedule. So we, she naturally just woke up every three hours and so did he. So they kind of were already on the same schedule separate and it was just important to us to keep that schedule. So, and this video will work for you whether you have twins or not. I'm just gonna talk about twins because I have them. But like I said, each twin is an individual child. So if you just have one baby and you're thinking about and you're watching this going, oh, it's for twins. It's for any baby. You could have quads. If you have quads, bless you, mama. But no matter how many babies you have, this video probably will be at least a little bit helpful to you. But they naturally just woke up every three hours because a lot of babies, that's just their natural thing. They wake up about every three hours and they're eating. So we kept that same schedule. Now, when they first were brought home, both NICU and here, we swaddled them. Both of them liked being swaddled. Not every baby will, but our babies liked being swaddled. We use swaddles like this, just the plain blanket swaddles. They do have swaddles, and I know it's overwhelming. They have ones that have Velcro and all kinds of things, weights on them. We just used the stretchiest blanket swaddles, my favorite ones, and the most budget-friendly ones that I can find that work super well are the ones by the brand called Rafe and Moose. And I'll just leave that name below so you guys can like Google search it or whatnot. Um, they have the best swaddles for not very much money. Honestly, they are amazing. They always have deals on them and they stretch and they're big. So you can wrap that baby up into a freaking baby burrito. That's the best type of swaddle I've ever used. And both of the twins loved them. And I think the key is getting a tight enough swaddle so that they're not breaking through because anytime we use other like muslin type swaddles, they would break through their arms out and they would wake up crying every single time. So that's my one suggestion is expensive swaddles don't always mean more sleep. We found these Rafe and Moose brands. They're a smaller brand and they are just the best ones I've ever used. I'm not biased because our son's name is also Rafe like their son. I just 
I mean, it's just a random coincidence. So <laughs> um, I'm a little biased as I love that name, but I absolutely love the brand and they're the best you can get for the least amount of money. So that's how we started them off. And as far as the routine went, daily routine is very important when it comes to sleep because you don't want them to get overtired or be overstimulated and not want to sleep. So the sleep or the routine, I guess I should call it, that we followed every day since they were born is the easy method. You can look this up on Pinterest. I mean, I don't feel like you have to have like a schedule printed out. It's very simple. EAS, as in the easy method, stands for eat, activity, sleep. And you do it over and over and over again. Baby wakes up, you feed them, obviously change them, let them play, put them back to bed for their nap. And you do it over and over and over again. And that gets them into that routine. And of course, at the first part of their life, they're going to sleep a lot, right? That's amazing. It's the best because they sleep so, so much. And it's just the best thing ever. And as they get older, the activity time will lengthen as they are getting older. So that's what we followed and we actually still follow that now. It's just kind of like a natural thing. And then at the very end of the day, if you look up the easy method, you'll see that the, the last nap I think is a shorter nap and you actually wake them up. This is them trying to prepare them for sleeping longer throughout the night. But we let our twins kind of determine when they were gonna sleep longer. At first our son wasn't gaining weight so we had to keep waking him and, and to feed him. So we just kept waking them both. With, if you have twins, routine is key especially with them. If you have one baby this won't matter but we did wake both of them and just gave them an extra bottle just to ensure their weights were going up because our son was quite the tiny one and they also were born a month early. So keep that in mind for later whenever I talk about something that has to do with being born early. But eventually they did start spanning out their time. They were awake longer and at night they would sleep longer. And eventually they both just slept one night through the first bottle and woke up when it was time for the second one. And it was amazing. If you just keep the schedule, the babies or baby will eventually just start stretching out those nighttime periods. Um, I don't know if part of it was luck on our end that we just got lucky or what, or if it was the routine that I kind of started with. So the main reason for this video was a lot of people were asking me about how I started getting them to sleep once I got them out of the swaddle and they started sleeping through the night. Now through the night, I do this because it's gonna be different for everyone. In my opinion, when I talk about babies sleeping through the night, I consider that to be about eight to nine hours because if I put the baby down to bed, I go to sleep and wake up and then they wake up, for me, they had just slept through the night because they slept the whole time that I was sleeping and I woke up without being woken up to feed them. So some people think of sleeping through the night to be like the 11 to 12 hours that most babies will get to when they sleep from like eight to eight or are asleep now from seven to seven. Um, it's different for everyone. There's no right or wrong way. But to me, when I talk about sleeping through the night, I just mean that I got a full night's sleep and I felt great the next day without having to wake up to feed babies. So our baby started sleeping through the night when they were about 18 weeks old. They were still in here with us. It was very important for me to keep them in here with us, especially because our son had a breathing issue, which is, has nothing to do with this video. But I just wanted them to be sleeping through the night for like a week or two before I put them in their rooms to make sure it was like a done deal and I could feel safe putting them in their room to sleep and not having to walk back and forth through the middle of the night like half asleep. So um, about 18 weeks came and they were sleeping through the night. So before they actually started sleeping through the night, like my through the night, uh, when they were about, I wanna say about four months exactly. Four months is kind of a milestone that a lot of moms get to because some people who believe in sleep training, they say that four months, you can start at four months, started at four months. Um, I personally didn't start at four months. It's definitely personal opinion. I'm not here to shame you if you did. I just wasn't ready because they were born early. They were born a month early. So we didn't even start that whole anything like that until they were five months old. And they may, may have actually been like five and a half months when I felt comfortable doing it. Basically all I did for sleep training, I'll just say this, um, I did get them out of their swaddles. So let's talk about that really quick. Once they were done with being swaddled, we broke them from the swaddles by only swaddling them with one arm out. So swaddling them around their body, just keeping one arm out. And then after a while, we swaddled just their body with no arms in the swaddle. And um, they were still having a little bit of the startle, startle reflexes, which was kind of frustrating. So we ended up looking into these right here. 
and these are called the baby merlin magic sleep suit they look just like a little baby snowsuit if you live somewhere cold it will look very familiar this is what little snowsuits look like for babies and you just unzip this put them in here zip them up and these were miracle suits you guys i'm not kidding you complete miracle suits i didn't believe it I read so many Amazon reviews and I'm like, it's not going to work for both babies. And it, they worked. So here, this is my son's. My daughter has one that's pink. They also come in yellow. I ordered mine from Amazon. I think Target has them. Bye, uh, baby. might have them. Um, but these, honestly, are the best. They are, they're not really weighted. They're just a thicker material. And it keeps them from, like, startling themselves awake. You know, babies have that reflux. Ours still have it at that time. And it took my daughter two nights, I think, to get used to this. I started her in naps that day. And then two nights later, I put her in it for night and she was fine. And then our son instantly just took to it the second I put it on. He just seemed to like it because he is the one that really loved sleep in the beginning. He was a very, very, very tired baby. Um, so he took to it really, really well. And they have been the best ever since then. This is a size small. A size small will fit, I think, 12 to... 18 pounds. I think they were both around the 14 pound mark, maybe 13 to 14 pound mark before I put them in there. I personally feel like 12 pounds, it didn't like, it wasn't snug enough at 12 pounds and they are still in these right now and they're not quite 18 pounds yet. So they're still in these sleep suits and we're going to break them probably here in the next month or so into regular sleep sacks. So that'll be a different video for another time. But so far, the past four months, I think, they've been in these. And it's truly been amazing. Um, another thing to talk about, um, sleep training. Before I'll go back to that in just a minute. But we have these pacifiers. This is my daughter's um, unicorn pacifier. These are the Wubbinub brand. I'm sure that you guys have seen these all over. We have a ton of these laying around. These are really good when they're sleeping in their room too and you want them to sleep through the night, but they like passies. Not that you have to use a passy, but, um, hello. The light just changed weird, but our babies can obviously reach to find their passy and see it and grab onto it versus just having the passy without the animal on the back. It, they were, they were having a harder time like reaching for them and grabbing them if they woke up in the middle of the night. And if you're laying them down on their back, they actually stay weighted to their chest so they can have it and then just get rid of it whenever they don't want it anymore. I just feel like having this animal makes it easily accessible to them. And if maybe if they wake up and want it, they can just kind of grab it. And obviously when they're old enough, they can grab it and put it in their mouth without you having to go back and forth. So if you are okay with pacifiers, like we're fine with it for right now. Um, I really recommend the Webinubs too because these have been lifesavers for us as well. Now, sleep training. I told you guys I let them naturally kind of sleep through the night on their own. About um, 16 to 18 weeks they were sleeping through the night, about eight and a half, nine hours. Then I moved them to their room. Um, we did go through a four month sleep regression with one baby when he was five months old. So technically he corrected it was four months old. And here's the thing. This is what my, my pediatrician told me when it came to sleep regressions because he just basically woke up at 1.30 every morning. And um, a couple nights I gave him a bottle. But then my pediatrician said not to do that because if he didn't need it before, he doesn't need it now. And that's kind of was her way of saying it. And at that point he had started gaining weight back like she wanted him to. And I was giving him an extra bottle before bed anyway. So I was getting the extra bottle in for his weight. And she said not to feed the, him when he woke up for the sleep regression because he would get used to that and be dependent on it. So after the second night, I stopped doing that. So basically how I sleep trained, my daughter naturally didn't need any sleep training at all. She's been a really amazing sleeper. I've been, she's been my easiest ever, like this, like at all. She's been just like the best sleeper ever. I'm just like... I love you for how much you sleep. Now he was a little bit different. Like he's the one who got the regression. He had a little bit of hard times at times going down. And what I did for sleep training only for him was the Ferber method. It is, it, it, I don't want, it's not a cried out method. It's more of like, I don't know. They do cry a little bit, but it's for very, very short amount of times. Like there's some methods where you put them to bed and just leave and I'll go back till the next morning. And that's not me. That would probably cause me to have a mental breakdown, hearing them just cry and cry and cry. 
Uh, again, it's all personal preference. This is a very controversial topic. But the fervor method pretty much is you put them down, like have them calm, like good night. And when they, if they wake up and start crying, you know, and don't want to go to sleep, you wait, I think for like one or two minutes, then you go back in and then you come back out. Once they're calm, wait another two minutes, go back in, whatever. Um, so I tried this the very first or the third night of the regression, which was the first night I didn't give him a bottle and he cried for like, I waited for like one minute and went back in, calmed him down, came back out, waited for one more minute when he cried again and went back in, calmed him down and I left. He never cried again that night. Like I sat by the door for probably 20 minutes, just sitting there like waiting for him to wake up again. And my daughter just slept through all of it. We do have white noise in there, so that was very helpful. With one baby, it's not gonna matter because there's no one gonna wake up probably. Um, the next night, same thing happened. I think I had to go in tw two more times that night. I waited one minute, waited, went back in. I think I waited two minutes the next time. And then that was it. After that night, he never woke up again. The regression was over, it, so it lasted technically four nights. And I have never had to go in since that night. Since they were five months old, I've never had to go in their room overnight. They're almost nine months old now. They will be nine months in a couple weeks. And I have not had a baby wake up in the middle of the night since the, that night, which is crazy. So my daughter's never woken up since she was about 18 weeks old through the night, and he hasn't since the regression and it has been amazing. The Ferber method, I really believe in that method. I did the same method with my, with my daughter, Aniston. It took us, I think, three or four nights with her, or took me. I was My husband was actually deployed when she was a baby too. Um, so her first year of life, I did all the, made all the, like, the parenting decisions, I guess, with her. That method worked with her really, really well, and she's been a great sleeper ever since then. I just personally couldn't wait you know, five, 10 minutes, I think it would drive me crazy. And I would just feel like so bad. Again, personal preference, we're not here to shame you. I'm not gonna allow people in the comments to shame you if you just decided to do like extinction and just not go back in, that's your decision. Um, but I found the Ferber, Ferber method to be easier. Why is that hard to say? Ferber, like Gerber with an F, so that. Um, but I think the combination of just their daily routine and just having that every day that they kind of like probably know what to expect being babies. And we always did white noise from the beginning. It kind of is a pain in the butt now when we go out places and they don't have white noise. So I do have it on my phone, but I don't regret doing white noise. I'm probably gonna use it still for a while. Even I still use it by this lamp on this side. I still have the hatch baby rest in here and I have a white noise for them as well. And I actually really like it because I can get like vacuuming done upstairs and they still sleep through it. So um, it's definitely going to be a combination of their daily routine, what you're swallowing them in, what you're putting it with them as far as sleep suits. If you, if you have pasties, I really recommend these. I think all of these things in general have just helped. I highly encourage you to look up the easy method and the Ferber method if you are to the point where you're wanting to sleep train. Um, I mean, it only took us a couple nights and only one baby needed it. I definitely think that you should let your baby get to the point where they are sleeping longer on their own. Definitely don't try anything crazy before they're ready for it. That's why I didn't try it four months because I knew corrected they were only three months at that time. So I waited till they were five months corrected to four. Um, so I hope this video helps you guys. I'm not a sleep expert. I've heard a lot of good things about like taking care of babies program. If you go on Pinterest and look at different sleep methods, there's so many methods. You can Google it. There's just read about all of them. See what's right for you. Personally, the Ferber worked with both my oldest daughter or my middle daughter and my son. And it's been fantastic ever since. And I can't speak highly enough about it. I felt comfortable with it. And it's all gone so smoothly that I just like, I'm just thankful now that I did it back then because if I would have kept feeding him and not tried that method, I don't know what his sleep would be like today. Like, I'm not sure if it would have, if I'd still be waking up today or what, but let me just tell you, having a baby at all, especially having two of them, you value your sleep a lot more than you ever have. And I definitely value my sleep now more than I ever have in my entire life. <laughs> so uh, I hope this video helps you guys. If you have questions, please leave them below for me. I will link um, this sleep suit right here. I might link a couple of these if I can find some cute ones. Like we have unicorns and bears and bulls and all kinds of them. So I might link some of these if I can find them for you. And I again, I'll leave the Swallow Company's name so you can go check them out. And that's going to be all for today's video. Let me know down below, did you sleep train? Did you not? I'm curious to hear what your guys' experiences have been or your plans without being negative towards any other mom because 
at the end of the day, we're all just doing the best that we can for our kids and that's all that matters. So I will see you guys next time. Bye.